Hello dear colleagues, partners and investors. You're on the channel doing of smarters as always I'm Alexander Sudriv. And today we have here a licensed winder who has been working with the combined winding technology Slavyanka for about 8 years. For more information see our release. Hello Victor, today you are our guest for the first time. Tell us, what is the purpose of your visit? Of our visit? The purpose of our visit is that I have known Dmitry Alexandrovich for a long time. We have always communicated with him in Skype, on the phone. He has always helped us and told us everything. And now that I have such an opportunity, I decided to come here myself and get to know everything firsthand. But you are a professional winding licensee, if I understand it correctly. I am a winder and also a licensee. And as for these electric motors, I started to wind them in 1990, probably even earlier, and did it until 2012 or until 2011 when I first met Dmitry Alexandrovich, and that's when I began to apply Slavyanka for winding motors. And why is it so that you spend a long time winding classic motors using the star and delta diagrams? Why did you end up applying Slavyanka? How did it happen? How did you find out about it? How did I find out about it? We met with Dmitry Alexandrovich. A good start, yes. And I started my first motor right away with a 50 kilowatt motor. 50 kilowatt right away. And when I mounted it, and it worked well, as they say, it provided a big saving, it stopped hitting, and I haven't done any more classic winding types ever since. Not a single motor, not a single one. And how long has this been going on? I haven't applied any classic winding types for 8 years. Those people who know me, I can say that none of them can tell me that I just said something wrong. In fact, everyone who I communicated with and when I worked, I refused to use the classic winding types, I didn't use the classic winding diagrams. This is impressive. You have been using Slavyanka alone for 8 years. And why does this happen? That someone believes that it is profitable for the winder to apply Slavyanka. Others say quite the opposite. I mean, what is the real situation today? I can say that today everyone uses what they think is best. With regard to efficiency, for example, the customer orders a motor. As far as I know, there is a period called maintenance, when everyone has to bring their own motor and either service it or purchase a new one because it's broken down. Does this algorithm change with Slavyanka? Is it more often or less often? How viable is it? I suppose that Slavyanka also burns out. And if the maintenance specialists do not conduct plant preventive maintenance activities, a motor will burn out, either a Slavyanka or a classic one. Explain to our viewers, please, what PPR is. Well, first of all, it's bearings, and secondly, it is tied in contacts, put in protection, so that everything works. Because if you lose the phase, then both the classic and Slavyanka will burn. Slavyanka with two current phases will operate in the open circuit mode for some time. But if you load Slavyanka, it will burn out too. Currently, I think that there are already power engineers who began to put protection, began to put the revolutions and began to check the voltage currents and they began to treat their vehicles better. Because of the high cost of an electric motor solely. Victor, judging from what you're saying, you like Slavyanka, you have been using only it for 8 years. You stopped using classic winding. Based on what you have said, it is not yet completely clear why you ended up using Slavyanka. It is more difficult to wind it. And it makes no difference for the consumer or potential customer if it's Slavyanka or not. So, why did you end up using it and why did you make your life more complicated? You know, for everyone, you make movies, this is your hobby. And my work is also my hobby. And I want to make it work well. So, in fact, it turns out Slavyanka outperforms classic motors. Of course. For the potential customer, depending on their needs, Slavyanka can be more profitable in terms of the operational runout, let's say, it's more reliable. Of course, I can say for sure here that we have repeatedly changed the motors of lower power to higher power, and we have also changed the power on the compressors many times. It's not just some pump, you can tell a lot about pumps, because in case with a Slavyanka pump, it seems that you can still go one size down with a motor 
if you install Slavyanka. You mean reduce the size, of course. But with a pump it is such a thing. And to put it on the compressor is the right thing. A compressor is at least an indicator of reduction on some concrete. Well, in general, for heavy machinery this is an indicator. That a, let's say, 7-point kilowatt motor performs like a 9 kilowatt or 11 kilowatt one. Well, 11 kilowatt is very hard, but 9 kilowatt for a 7.5 kilowatt hardware will do in terms of the current density. That is, it will cope with this 9 kilowatt. In the same size the motor is 7.5 kilowatt, it will operate just as well, but it will demonstrate the performance and currents of a 9 kilowatt motor. This is roughly speaking if we take not Slavyanka but a classic motor, then we will need to put a 9.5 kilowatt motor. It will be bigger than the one that, well, not 9 kW, but 10 kW or 11 kW will have to be installed. Well, in fact, we again benefit in terms of mass and size dimensions and weight, of course, and also the fact that the motor will work for a long time. Because sometimes you load a motor, sometimes even the bearings break something. And anything can happen to the motor. And nevertheless, an overload of the Slavyanka motor will not lead to it burning out. It will reduce the revolutions. We have already tested it too. So, in fact, Slavyanka is interesting for the customer. Of course. Here we go. It is interesting not only for the consumer. It is interesting because a person can mount a motor and forget about it. The consumer has to do less rewinding for electric motors. Roughly speaking, based on all the details we have discussed, a person has put a new classic one in motor, let's say that it has worked for a year, and then this person goes to service it. With Slavyanka this period may increase due to the fact that these voltage drops and so on and so forth do not cause any trouble to the motor. Of course, if you have good contacts, normal bearings, normal covers, then the motor will work. I just want to say that Slavyanka for the drilling rig, when the motor doesn't heat and when you have normal currents and the load is minimal, it copes well. It works longer than a classic motor in the water. Everything is clear. Because in case your currents have increased, something has broken, you can put thinner insulation on Slavyanka and thicker insulation on the classic one in motor. Everything depends on that. They work excellently on drilling rigs. I mean Slavyanka on drilling rigs. First of all, these are not my words. These are the words of drillers themselves who drilled the piles. But this is really important. This is the best review. This is the end user, in fact, telling about the operation of what he has received. Yes, on the drilling rigs, they motors cope with the operation load excellently. Well, Victor, as far as I know, you're planning to open another winding shop, an office somewhere in Moscow. Is it true? Yes, I'm going to open it in Zelenograd. And this is basically normal, because I think Slavyanka needs to be promoted, and it is our future. And if we don't make Slavyanka now, then tomorrow we may be left without a planet to live on. Well, actually, dear viewers, now you have the answer to the question, if there is someone in Moscow who can perform the Slavyanka winding for you. Here is Victor, as large as life. I can only say one thing, each piece of equipment needs its own Slavyanka. Of course, there are a lot of ins and outs, and it's impossible to take any motor and to make any motor out of it. First of all, the supplied motors are quite bad. They have been rewound two or three times and have a piece of metal instead of hardware. It's better to dispose of this motor, buy a new one and rewind it using Slavyanka. Regarding the question of responsible motors, I heard that you had successfully completed the motor winding in megawatt. Well, not exactly one megawatt, it's 950. But nevertheless, it's quite impressive. Well, yes, but this is of course another story. As I understand, this is also not so simple. Well, it's difficult to do it alone. Did you do it alone? <laughs> Well, it was hard, of course, but it can be done. All of this is calculated, all of this works if you approach it responsibly. 
Well, again, if we go back to the consumer saving, then this is both a resource and electrical energy saving, of course. Virtually, the amount that the consumer pays to the winder for completing the Slavyanka winding pays off. I suppose Mitra Alexandrovich said that this was a matter of about three months, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, because we equipped the first 55 kilowatt motor with a meter. We put a meter on it before winding, and then disconnected and rewound it. Those were not my words, it took it exactly three months to pay off, and it's a 55 kilowatt motor that works for days non-stop. 55 kilowatts per day. He gave it three months to pay off. Yes, it's true, and this person is still here. Interesting. But again, to understand this, it is necessary to ensure that every power engineer is interested, and an audit is completed before that. The weekly and monthly measurements are made before that. And then you can switch to Slavyanka, and then we will see the result. You will not see any result with one motor only. The audit is actually necessary in order to get some reporting indicators, on the basis of which you can then calculate what you will get. Of course, after one audit you start modernizing, and after that another audit is conducted. And after a while the secret becomes obvious. We now have plants undergoing excessive spendings. They have losses, losses, and I would even say between neutral and zero, to 60 amperes the currents are lost. They are experiencing losses, and this is due to the fact that there is either no contact there, the motor doesn't match, or sometimes everything is broken off. And that's it. But there are of course those who are now beginning to think and watch it, and so after the audit, you know what kind of motor you need to put there. Maybe this 11 kW motor is too big? Well, you can put 7.5 kW motor. And then it turns out that this 7.5 kW motor is too much for you, and someone came up with the idea of putting 11 kW. In fact, it's a very typical situation in production when a person buys, for example, a production unit, there is a certain motor installed in it, for example, an 11 kW motor. But in fact, it's not needed there, you need a 7 kW motor. Yes. And merely at the expense of this, it's possible to save money. But if you use Slavyanka, the saving increases considerably. First, Slavyanka works very well at hydroelectric power plants. This has already been tested. It's proved to work well. In addition to this fact, Slavyanka goes into generation earlier than classic winding motors. This is an important point. This is also there. This is a technology that works. Have you personally tested this for yourself? Well, of course, that's a given. Hydroelectric power plants are operating well. There are guys who assemble all these electronics, collect all these parts, and there is a launch directly on our induction motor based on Slavyanka in the green mode. Can you make an example? I have a photo, but that's not the point. The fact is that there are people who just put, for example, a motor and use this motor with a greater power capacity to produce lesser power. And you also get less in terms of power capacity to make it generate sooner. And the most interesting thing is that Slavyanka is not vulnerable to losing hydro pressure. Even if your motor has already got generated, started generating energy, and you reduce the torque a little bit, well, there happened to be less water supplied. But at the same time, Slavyanka didn't lose its generation capacity. Seriously. And with classic motors, it goes off. And that's why you should use the devices and get it checked. But the fact is that the classic motor would fail with the decrease in torque, and Slavyanka copes well. And with Slavyanka, first, a 100 kW motor provides 120 kW, and it pulls well. Seriously? Seriously, it doesn't hit. And on the generator there are 75 kW motors. They turn it with an ordinary pump, put a turbine, and it will also work well. This is the process of generation going on. This is really very serious, because I have checked myself how a DA90S motor works. This is what Victor Aristov does. They install drive electric motors on motorcycles. There are also very impressive results. The motors really don't hit no matter how you ride this motorcycle. Yes, Slavyanka is Slavyanka. If we finish it now, 
It will also go. Is this also a drive motor? Well, yes. This one will be the bomb. We'll be waiting. This is not the Chinese version. It's our Russian one. The Slavic version. Well, Slavyanka is good for us too. But this one is bigger in size, this one is smaller. Exactly. It's just that this one has higher driving capacity due to its bigger dimensions. Of course. We touched upon the topic of check-in motors. As far as I know now, this is a popular topic on the internet and it is discussed in textbooks that you can check, as far as I understand, the correctness of the diagram that has been assembled in the stator pack. Assembling the diagram. Yes, they supply voltage, put a bearing or some cylinder or something else, and then it starts rotating in the motor. What is it? What is checked by this? Please tell us. There are very frequent questions now. People send such videos and ask if Slavyanka can do this. I can say one thing. Yes, it exists. Generally, the motors are checked at low voltage. But I can say one thing. Slavyanka does not rotate at low voltage. But as far as I know, the induction motor is a regular one too. No, turn on an induction motor at 36 volts using a transformer, throw a ball in and you'll get it rotating. And Slavyanka won't rotate. Slavyanka won't. What is the reason for this? I don't know what the reason is. I can only say that I rewound the motor two times because of this. Because I always checked it myself, threw something in and everything worked. When I started working with Slavyanka, I thought that it would be the same and threw it and it didn't work. I had to disassemble the circuit. The diagram is correct. I thought it was something in the wires. And I had to give it back to the customer. It really happened. It was a compressor motor. A customer arrives. I say, now wait please until we check everything for you. And it doesn't rotate. Damn it, but it was necessary to give it back. So I disconnected and rewound it in one night. He comes in the morning and I say, everything is ready. You can take it. The customer says, come on, drop a ball. I say, I won't. And the customer says, yes, throw a ball to make sure it works. I threw it. The customer says, it's not rotating again. I say, well, it doesn't rotate. But what can I do? Everything is correct, I couldn't have made a mistake here. And you have to figure it out yourself why it doesn't rotate. Well, the motor has been operating since they put it in the compressor. But in fact, if you have high voltage applied, then I did not throw balls in Slavyanka anymore. That's for sure. I kept checking it with some spinner all the time. Let's check this out now. Dismantle, so to say, the myth. I have the abilities for that. Here in the laboratory, we have the opportunity to do this. I would of course be happy to check this out, especially since I don't have to rewind it later. Even more so. But the thing is, that for some reason it works on classic winding, but doesn't work on Slavyanka. I would say that checking with a ball is not relevant for Slavyanka, and you should not add it to the textbook. You can check. But again, you need to apply high voltage, which is dangerous. Because either, as they say, the ball can jump out and go out of the window or hit the eye, or the motor can burn out. Before we got there, the motor has already burned out. Well, or there is one person somewhere, the motor is turned by another person, that is, one person can even burn it out. Really bad. Let's move there, and there we'll continue the conversation of this topic and just graphically demonstrate this very experience. Let's go. Let's go. Well, in fact, we have moved to our laboratory, where we will now conduct experiments and put a metal ball in our motor first. Although there can be any sequence. A small bearing, a spinner that consists of metal discs without a bearing. And of course, the main feature is a large industrial bearing. This is all that could be done here in the conditions of being strapped for time. Yes, and it's worth noting that if you want to repeat something like this, you need to use a low voltage motor, because on the high voltage one, something can go wrong and it definitely will, so don't repeat it at home. And since our motor is a drive motor, you should know about it. Let's try. Let's do it. Well, let's start with this spinner. Igor Karhov is helping us, he's so to say in charge. Give low voltage, please. What is the voltage here now? Now it's 100% current. 100. But now we are reducing it now. How much have you reduced it now? Can you see there? 70%. So what about less than 50? 50? Bring it up to 30 and that's it. Up to 30. 
Well, the spinner is becoming slower and slower if we… How much is it now? 20%, I guess. 20. It is basically standing still. Which means that 20% it is already losing rotation. And also the general purpose industrial motor will rotate at low voltage. But Slavyanka won't work at low voltage. But it's not a bad thing as I understand it. These are just features, yes. So, what do we start from now? Let's take a small bearing. And now again we set the same 20%. No, it's the full power now. Full power? Give full power, will you? Full power is the rated voltage in this case. Yes. Have you given it? It's the rated voltage now. Well, for some reason the bearing doesn't move until you push it. Is this the rated voltage now? Yes, the rated value. All right, then reduce it now. How much? Well, basically here you reduce the field, the rotation decreases, everything. At 40% it failed. Well, if the spinner was at 20%, it did not rotate, the bearing popped out at 40%, it failed to move, it lost its field. Probably due to the fact that it's heavier, heavier and that it's made of a completely different material. Now we're throwing the ball. Let's do it. Here it goes. Is this the rated value? The rated one, yes. And how much are you giving now? I'm gradually reducing it. 60, 50%. Do it. At 60.5%, the ball also stopped. I'll explain once again. This means that a classic winding motor will have completely different performance indicators. We decided to do this. First, wind it to be a classic plant produced motor, then wind Slavyanka, and then take this experiment. To have two motors with the same performance indicators, and so that it's clear that this one has a classic winding and this one has Slavyanka, and to see how it goes and how it works, to see the exact situation. Now, on the power motor, on the drive motor, both motor types demonstrated that if I reduce, the ball doesn't rotate too. Well, I reduced the field, removed the voltage, the currents, and the ball is already beginning to stand still. Let's try our big bearing. This will be the best. Very graphic. Let's use duct tape straight away. We'll put it here. I haven't turned it on yet. Ready? Yes. Can you see it, colleagues? That's it, I'm increasing the voltage. I'm stuck, but there is nothing to worry about. That's my hand, don't do it, that's it, yes. Now it's the rated value. The rated value, yes. Now without taking your hand off, hold it like this and now take it away. I'm starting to reduce it. How much? Stop, stop, stop. Now it stopped. That's it, but it's about 70%. 70% and the bearing already stopped. Well, again it's the same pattern. Not smooth. That's it actually. But if we put a rotor here, it will rotate, of course. But this is again a drive motor. This is not a general purpose industrial motor. There are completely different currents and other performance indicators. If the currents are high here now, and when they decrease, only then we can see something. Well, in fact, if we now look at why this test is done, what do they usually want to demonstrate with it? Correct circuit assembly. In fact, in case with Slavyanka, is this test acceptable? Does it show the correctness of the assembled circuit or not? Or it is impossible to say for sure. I can say for sure that if Slavyanka works on two phases with a full capacity rotor, that it will still rotate the ball, but it will do so only at a high voltage than yours. That is, here the correctness of the Slavyanka circuit diagram even before, which they now produce and advertise, and sometimes there are such situations when it is inaccurate for Slavyanka. It shows, it shows the weather. On the devices or in what? In devices. 
It's not calibrated or not configured for it, but very often it's inaccurate on Slavyanka. Which means outside the laboratory, you can also use some devices at hand to check the efficiency of the motor, well at least to show some basic performance characteristics. You can take two or three devices and a transformer, and everything can be checked, even without inserting the rotor. Excellent. Well, we can sum up in the following way. In this experiment Slavyanka works in a slightly different mode than the classic motor based on the delta or star diagram. That's why I think that we have an opportunity to compare Slavyanka and classic motors in the future. I think we will try to do this and show some specific differences through an example, right? Absolutely. Well, in this case we cannot say that a ball or bearing which in Slavyanka rotates at a higher current is something bad or wrong. This way we will not be able to conclude that a motor is inoperable or a circuit is assembled incorrectly. It's just different. On Slavyanka, yes. On Slavyanka the ball will rotate anyway. Well, great, only with a high current, yes. But again, depending on how the diagram is mixed up. If your diagram is actually mixed up, then it will rotate. It all depends on how well you connected the circuit. I mean, you can also check Slavyanka using this method. You just need to take into account the fact that a bigger current is needed for rotation. If the circuit is incorrect, we can understand it by system hang probably. As for Slavyanka, I can say that if the winder does not rust himself, then he should check it. Every winder should trust himself and believe first of all that he has done a good job and that he gives a guarantee because he has done it. Maybe you still have something you want to share with us. Tell us about some interesting cases concerning people who refer to you concerning the Slavyanka technology. Maybe there are those who want you to help them master the motor winding procedure using this technology, because there are not so many winders in the world who can do it. They refer to us. But I first send everyone to buy the reference guide. Dmitry Alexandrovich published a reference guide a long time ago for the combined windings. Yes. And this is where a winder who wants to master combined winding should start with the reference guide. I think those who haven't bought the reference guide don't need Slavyanka at all. And here, as they say, Slavyanka also has a lot of advantages and disadvantages. The downside is that winding is a quite a long and tedious job. The advantages are that it works well, and in the forum when people refer to us asking to help them with the calculations, saying they want it, you should start from buying a reference guide from Dmitry Alexandrovich. But in fact, I would even say that it is not a downside of Slavyanka. It requires more complex technological processes in order to approach it. You should do it in a clever way with a certain amount of knowledge. And buying the reference guide will help you to learn the whole thing, read in more detail, and make a decision for yourself whether they need all of this or not. Yes, but to start, you still need it. Even those who refer to me always started with a reference guide. First they bought the reference guide, then we always talked and found a common topic. Should a winder buying the reference guide acquire the theoretical knowledge or try to wind something using the guide? I mean, is it possible for an experienced winder or even not a very experienced one to just buy the reference guide and using only the information it provides to make a motor for personal use? Of course, it is possible. And in fact, everything is clear in the reference guide. Everything is written there in order to make it possible for a person to come, read it, and if he has some knowledge and already has some experience, he'll be able to sit down, make calculations and make a motor for himself. To sum up, Slavyanka has a lot of advantages, a truly lot of pros, and users really like it, and there are really quite a lot of orders. Yes, so thank you very much for sharing your experience with us. Visit us again, absolutely. Well, once again, now each of you will soon be able to become Victor's customer, because he will be engaged in modernization of induction motors by means of Slavyanka technology in Zelenograd. As soon as we get detailed information and contact details, we will inform you. Thank you for viewing. Please subscribe to the channel, put a like, click the bell icon. See you again.